Delighted to be here. Under three minutes. Wow. Don't put any pressure on me. Um, really happy to be here. Um, uh, my name is Michael. Um, I am the founding partner of, of this brand. Um, and um, I think one of the biggest parts of my job is, is not actually to work in fashion, to be, but actually to be outside of fashion. Uh, I do a lot of speaking. And um, mostly it's, it's about the future, um, sustainability and the causes that it has to our daily lives really affects not only people, but the way we work, the way we play. And what we try to do in our brand is something that's just twitched a little bit in a different way. And I'm going to show you some... Um, I'm just going to show you actually one case today, which is the most important that we're working at right now. Uh, but first of all, I want to start off with, um, I actually introduced myself as a surfer and a dreamer. Um, and when you have big dreams, you come up with notions like this, kind of ludicrous in a way. Uh, but we believe that our industry has such an important role to play. And if we can tweak that in a more interesting way, then maybe we can make it an amazing driver for the future. See, the fundamental problem, or if you see it as a problem or not, that's, that's um, your perspective, is that our industry is, is propelled enormously by these three factors. And if you're in the back, I'll explain them to you, because maybe you can't see the pictures. But it's vanity, which is an amazing, strong, sort of propelling motion of an industry. And it's driven by consumerism and sex appeal. Our industry has this uh, magnet to capture people. And, and um, uh, when we talk about sustainability uh, and trying to sort of change things, and when we're battling this on one hand, it's like you being a, a rodeo cowboy you're on your horse with your lasso, and you're trying to stop a speeding rocket from NASA. It's quite overwhelming in a way. Um, but it has something that's genius, and it's a force. Uh, and when we talk about sustainability, it's always about doing less, less, um, less waste, less chemicals, less water consumption. What we believe is if we tweak this slightly, then we can use these massive areas a better way, just by tweaking it slightly. I have a segment of all my presentations which is based on facts. Uh, and I like this slide here. Uh, if you can't see it, it illustrates the United Nations population growth the next 15 years. And why this is relevant is because most business owners, if you're a board level, CEO, whatever, this is what they listen to. Uh, what we know is that textile industries has been based on cheap labor and uh, cheap resources, natural resources from the planet. And today the consumption based on 7 billion people is about 89 million tons of fibers, different fibers, it's synthetic fibers or it's natural fibers such as cotton, uh, et cetera. In 15 years, at the rate we're going right now, we're more than doubling that consumption. So 200 million tons of textile fibers. And you don't really have to be scientists. You don't really have to be read up on this topic to know that it's impossible for us today, the way we're consuming, to actually produce 200 tons of fibers. So a lot of initiatives are based on sort of recycling. Um, we haven't come that far because we don't really have an infrastructure on it. Uh, but this is the way we're going to consume in the future. So the need, what I usually refer to, we have a, uh, a business in need, but we have a market demand. 
which doesn't really correlate with the, the state of the planet today. And this is an immense problem for uh, not us just as individuals, but if you run a fashion brand today, this is a massive problem for you. Because consumers drive the market. Uh, and the tricky part for, um, for our industry is um, it's this. I go to heaps of conferences around the world, and they all speak about two big topics, innovation and sustainability. And what they're really, really good at is doing what we do right now, sit and have coffee. And it's, it's really, you know, it's cozy and everything, but not a lot of things get done at these conferences. Um, and the trouble is that if you've had a brand, you've been working with this brand for years, you're really good at sort of fine-tuning every sort of little aspect of your business. Uh, and then comes this big sort of uh, chapter on sustainability, where all of a sudden you have to think about your energy consumption or your water consumption, and you have to do less. And as human beings, w what do we do when people say you have to do less of this? So sort of like, ah, oh, that's no fun. That's just sort of uh, facts. We don't like that when people tell us we can't do this. Um, so as a framework, it's more interesting from a creative and design perspective to sort of say, don't do this. Inside this box, call it sustainability, call it the future, whatever, and then you can do anything else. What we try to do is, um, or actually I'll, t I'll tell you a story, the last two years I've uh, been very much zoomed out from our daily operations, and I've, I've traveled the world. If you look at my Instagram account, it looks like I've been on this epic surf journey uh, for 24 months. Uh, but I've, I've, I've taken myself apart from our daily operations to read, do lecturing, um, listen to a lot of people in our industry, what kind of issues they have, what kind of problems they have. Uh, but most important, maybe listen to people who are not in our, in our industry, people who are in other fields who have propelled, who are pioneers, thought leaders, when it comes to sustainability and making um, an impact from a business perspective or just a personal perspective that is beneficial for people and planet. Thing is, we don't really have to invent the wheel again when it comes to sustainability. It's very clear what we shouldn't do. Uh, but it's very hard for our industry, me and my colleagues, uh, to actually transform that into a platform that we have today. But if we start to listen to people outside our industry, there's so many good initiatives. So what we started today, based on two years of drinking coffee with a lot of people and seeing that not a lot of things happen because they're so stuck in daily operations, is that we decided to... Um, uh, create something for ourselves, which is called Dedicated Institute. And it's actually being launched. You're the first group of people, more than people just sitting in a boardroom, to see this project. It's, um, it's the world's first innovation-driven program for the textile industry. And what it does is it looks at things outside our industry, tries to mimic them and brings them into the industry. What it says here, um, in our future, the fashion industry will shift to be a global driver for change. That's our sort of vision, and that's what we believe. Um, and that's sort of the fundament that our, this program was, was uh, created on. Uh, we believe that if we can do something in a different way, where we actually design our products, we make our models, um, business models, that is, <laughs> um, in a way which benefits people and planet, then it could actually be interesting for the future, not the way textiles is conceived today. See, I, I always reference to the car industry, because the car industry and the fashion industry, they sort of took off in the first and the second um, industrial revolution. And if you look at the car industry today, we have initiatives like Tesla, you know, the electric car. Um, we have Google making self-driven cars. 
We have maker community projects. Um, I think it's called Local Motors, which 3D prints cars in less than, than 48 hours. All these initiatives were conceived from people who weren't really from the automotive industry traditionally. So the question isn't really, is this going to happen to the textile industry? It's straightforward, yes. The question is, who's going to do it and when? And either you can be a part of it, you can start create it yourself, uh, or you can wait until some genius person who's not from the textile industry comes in and says, hey, let's do this instead. This seems logic and more fun. So we decided to do it ourselves by creating this. So it's non-profit, it's innovation driven, and it's sort of based on the open source platform because that just makes sense. Like if we're doing something that's good, if we can produce a garment which is good for planet and people, what's the best thing to do? Share it with everybody. Share the ideas behind it, share the recipes. How do we actually do this? How did we make it? Give it away to as many people as possible. So our, our challenge here is actually to make something that is so kick-ass that nobody can ignore it. I'm going to show you just, I said, I'm just going to show you one. We do, how it works is we have different cases. Um, a couple of them have just been launched, but officially this is being launched next month, this whole program. And anybody who's interested can participate, if it's uh, you as an individual, or if you have an organization that's, wow, this is amazing, or if you have a brand, wow, good stuff, come join us. Uh, so it's very open to anybody. And you can tag along in any of the cases that we do, and I'm going to show you one of the cases that we find really, really interesting. And it's this. Uh, now, it may look like a bunch of randomly scattered icons, which it actually is. Uh, but this is the idea of something called, uh, maybe you've heard of it, it's carbon capturing. Um, normally I see one or two heads nodding, but... Uh, what this is, is a technology that's been developed for uh, quite some time now. And it captures greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. Uh, the little globe here, I, I have one of these, Whoop. the little globe here, and it captures them in a, in a, um, in a factory and um, contains the carbon and transforms it from gas to fluid. And from fluid, it's possible to transform it into a fixed matter, plastic. And Plastic, most people can relate to, and I've seen it, and I'm sure that a lot of you are wearing something which is plastic-based, polyester, for instance. Uh, I would guess that everything, if you're wearing something polyester, comes from oil today. Uh, this, uh, maybe there's some, some... No, it should be oil. Um, from this, um, these plastic components, we're able to, um, to make thread. And from the thread, we're obviously able to make um, fabric, and fabric becomes a jacket. This is in theory. Uh, how far is this process today? Well, this is what it actually looks like. So capturing from the atmosphere, it goes into this and results in these pellets of plastic. Uh, and from there, I know that you uh, You've seen garn and yarn, and you know what a textile garment looks like in the end. Uh, the amazing thing about this concept is that it is superior to using oil in the ways of uh, energy efficiency. And what CEOs love to hear, it's superior when it comes to money. It outbeats oil by nine times. But the most amazing part is when we do this, this process of creating a textile garment from greenhouse gases, is that we clean the air. So every time we actually make a product, we remove greenhouse gases from the air. And this is something that is uh, kind of disruptive because we've never had this before. Everything in textiles is about doing less bad. But all of a sudden, we have something that is actually good. So it puts an interesting spin on, um, 
fast fashion. If we make things that actually clean the atmosphere, what does that make fast fashion? Well, it makes it the strongest driver to change the climate in a positive direction. So that's kind of interesting to play with that idea and that thought. Uh, it's just in theory so far, because we're not producing garments. But it's interesting, because that has never been technically possible before. Um, I get, so this is one, one of the cases. And um, probably the one that gets me most excited right now, because it's it's so superior to anything we've seen before. And we see the mergers. You see plastic here. Uh, we're thinking, let's put it in a 3D printer. Uh, we're just about a year away from printing things. Year, year and a half, printing things that actually have textile feel. I think you've seen, uh, it's more on an a, um, art kind of way things are being printed today and most things they end up at, at uh, MoMA or other museums because it is more art but we're really close and that's an amazing breakthrough as well we have a 3D printer a 3D printer making things uh, from a material that cleans the air so it's completely disrupted for our technology uh, if you've ever seen a supply chain in our industry it's heaps of different actions based on growing uh, cotton or any uh, other uh, fibers. Uh, it's it's uh, harvested. There's so much going on there. And all of a sudden, we can make things from a very simple three-step process. And we don't have to put it in areas, which uh, we produce textiles today. Uh, if you want to do something local, let's capture the air in Stockholm. Let's have a printer in Stockholm. Let's manufacture locally. This is local in a completely different meaning than we've seen before. Sourcing, production, sales. Which makes more sense in our book. I get asked a lot um, what's important in, um, in sustainability. And I think it's really, really overpowering this massive concept, sustainability. And it's really, really hard to relate to what do I actually do? And I want to share this, this uh, fun story. I, I happened to be in Dubai last month, and I was speaking, and I get flown in. Uh, I have an hour speaking engagement. I'm at my hotel, waiting for the driver. This car comes along. It's got tinted black windows, uh, and it's a Hummer. If you've seen a Hummer, if you know what a Hummer is, it's this massive uh, monster of a car which probably consumes more uh, gasoline than most other cars does. So I think uh, the irony couldn't really be higher. <laughs> uh, higher. Um, I'm in Dubai, uh, I'm talking about sustainability, and I get picked up by Hummer. <laughs> Brilliant. Now, it's the things that we do that matter. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, we could see that that isn't probably the best choice of vehicle for, uh, you know, considering the occasion and everything. Uh, but they actually did invite me to speak about a very relevant topic. Uh, I think this is the way media works as well. I mean, we, we, we get showered with the things that we do that aren't good. And it's really, really a big struggle when the topic is so huge. So it's the things that matter. I think Van Gogh said, um, you know, change uh, is just a series of small details all put together. So it's all the details that matter. And that's the way we think about it at our brand and I think as, as, as persons um, uh, with the team I work with. All the small things matter. Obviously, um, we have great concerns, but you know, it's the small things that matter, it's the actions that we do. They're tied down to our values, which are rooted so, sort of in, in our emotions, and that affects people. So that's what we try to do. If you think that anything of this nice morning ramble was interesting, um, please feel free to, to contact me. Um, thank you very much.